Gata Nastia. We do have that up yesterday. Today is an improved version of yesterday. Tomorrow will be better than today. That's the life we have, and I want you to believe it. So serve God more. He wants us to shine in the midst of darkness. God always take care of his own in famine. No matter the trouble, God always take care of his own. Where you sleep and in your sleep, people are thinking about how to bless you. You wake up, you wake up into money. Maybe that person is not in church, is watching online. The, I, I'm telling you my daily encounter. I wake up into good news, into a favorable telephone call, making money at home, making money every day. Can I hear amen? amen? And that's what God wants to do with your life. That's what God wants to do with your life. Where you sleep, and by the time you wake up, it's good tidings, it's good news. People forcing good things on you. They are asking you to send your invoice. They are asking you to go and register a company because a business is waiting for that company. In the name of Jesus. So God always, he has a system of taking care of his home during famine. When you have challenges, difficulty, darkness, God always make a way of escape for his people. God has a system of taking care of his own during famine. And that's what God wants to do for us as a church. He wants to take care of you. He wants to build you a house during recession. He wants to change where you live. I want you to, to be alive to what God is saying. When things are difficult like this, it's a raw material for somebody to change the level. Because when men say there is a cast down, what will you be saying? I'm lifted. I mean, you have had Brother Samuel's testimony this morning of how he got a job without an interview. Powerful testimony. And it's moving from glory to glory. God changing our level during famine. God has a way of taking care of his own during his family. So no matter what is happening in the world, I want your faith to be alive because God will ensure that you are not stranded. He will ensure that your level go higher. And listen, the cashless economy is not your issue. Recession is not your issue. You are not supposed to partake. Our economy is not of this world. Our citizenship is of heaven. We are here, but we are not of this world. We are not of this terrain. We don't suffer what they suffer. We don't go through what they go through. God has a way to take care of his home during challenges, during darkness. Isaiah 60 verse 1, he said, your light has come. The glory of God is risen upon you. Darkness shall cover the head, gross darkness the people. But the Lord will arise upon you. And his glory will be seen in your life. So where people are saying things are difficult, but they see glory. Ireland Church, all I see about you is glory. Can somebody shout glory? Today is covenant day of good news and I hear good news from everywhere. Yeah. You will hear good news from home, yeah. good news from abroad, yeah. good news from afar yeah. in the name of Jesus. Luke chapter 2 verse 10, NIV translation. And the angel said to them, don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for how many people? 
good news that will cause great joy. Don't be afraid. I bring you good news. And that's why today we have covenant day of good news. Good news that will cause great joy. That kind of news that will make you celebrate the rest of your life. It's happening right now. It will happen this season. Good news in the midst of negativity. Good news in the midst of people who are stranded. Things not working. But for you, Islanders, you are hearing good news. See, someone business this year will flourish like never before. In the name of Jesus. Good news. You won't suffer what they suffer. I've told you severally, darkness is a raw material for light. You appreciate light more when you are coming out of darkness. When there is darkness and you suddenly see light, then you appreciate light more. What the world is going through is for the believers to shine. You are not going to suffer to go to heaven. You're going to shine to heaven. The mountain of the house of the Lord in this end time will be exalted above every other mountain. Then all nations will flow into it. This is the end time church. Island church is a platform for young people to shine. It is a platform for us to move forward. God has created this platform for somebody to come and shine out of darkness. This year, there will be many more house dedication. Many testimony. The testimony of new job will flow like water. Change of job will flow. In the name of Jesus. So, in the midst of darkness, you will hear good news. Testimony. In the mighty name of Jesus. Remember Job twenty two twenty nine. 29. He said, when men say we are cast down. Job twenty two twenty nine. 29. You will be shouting, I am lifted. You will say, I am lifted. When others are saying things are not working. Shining in the midst of negativity. Shining in the midst of darkness. New job, new house, new car. New things. In the name of Jesus. I tell you, this season you will hear good news. Good news testimony like never before. What you have been waiting for for years will happen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Nigeria we hear good news. In the mighty name of Jesus. So Luke 2 verse 10 we read. He said, I bring you good news that will cause great joy. Good news that will bring joy. Great joy to all people, not some people. Good news that will make islanders rejoice. Good news in your office. Somebody's job will be changed in the next seven days. The email you are waiting will come through. In the mighty name of Jesus. How many of you are expecting something great? You are expecting something great. It's coming very soon. In the mighty name of Jesus. I hear sudden turn around. Sudden turn around. In the mighty name of Jesus. The wise men were not expecting that angelic visitation. The angel jumped on them. He said, fear not because they were afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. I bring you good news. So those kind of testimony that jump on you when you are not expecting it, receive right now. Testimony of turnaround, of good tidings is coming your way in the mighty name of Jesus. I just have three things the Lord lay upon my heart for this covenant day of good news. Luke chapter 4, 16 to 18 will be my anchor scripture as I declare those three things into our life. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Okay, so I, I'm on a mission, a prophetic mission to declare three things into our life. Verse 18, uh, verse 16. Uh, is a starting point then we take it to verse 18 to declare those three things he said and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up as his custom was he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood to read that's why Timmy asked us to read today 
Jesus read. So you must read. He stood to read. And what happened? And they delivered to him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Where he opened the book and he found. Somebody shout, he found. I pray for you, you will find. He found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because I am anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. Underline, preach to the poor. Okay? He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, deliverance to the captive, recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those who are bruised. Praise the Lord. This will be our anchor test for these three things the Lord has laid upon my heart. I want to tell you what good news is all about. In verse 18, he said, he has, in fact, give me verse 18 alone in NIV translation. Um, because King James says, he has anointed me to preach good tidings. NIV says, he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. What the poor need is not money. They need good news. What the poor need is not cash. They need good tidings. And this good news is the gospel. The poor need the gospel. You know, most of the time we go for evangelism and you give people tract. They tell you, take your tract. We want. What they need is gospel. When you give a poor man good news, he will never be poor again the rest of his life. Give him money, he will finish the money. In fact, he will use that money for something not good. Eat with it, smoke with it, drink with it, and it's finished. But you give them gospel, you have given them life. This scripture says, gospel to the poor. Not money to the poor. You will think money to the poor because every other person, he will say, the oil of joy for those who are mourning and all of that. To answer poverty problem is not money. In fact, poverty has nothing to do with money. It's a mindset. It has nothing to do with presence or absence of money. When you meet a poor man, he behaves poor because of his mindset. He may have plenty of money, yet he's poor in his mind. He's poor in his character. And because of that poverty mentality, he remains down. He remains poor. Praise the Lord. For to a poor man, nothing is enough. When a poor man wants to enter a bus, he will rush because he knows the space are limited. When a poor man goes to a party, he's, he's struggling to get food first because he knows it will not go around before they come and tell us stories. So he want, he's struggling for everything. But a rich man who has abundance mentality, if I don't get food in this party, I can eat at home. Praise the Lord. So from today, don't behave like a poor man. When a poor man, a, a poor man just always think about scarcity, nothing is enough. A poor man will use toothpaste instead of throwing the, I mean, the, 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 what do you call that, the, the, the tube in the bean, after you use it, it will press it, press it, then they will go and get the scissors, cut it, and use the, the brush to scrub off, because nothing is enough. Praise God. Because that's a, po a poverty mentality. I think I preached once about that before. And one of the children had it. He told the mommy, say, mommy, don't do that again. Because let's raise our kid with abundance mentality, not poverty mentality. The poor person need good news. Gospel, good news, good tidings to the poor. You give them money, they, they will exhaust it. That is not the solution to their problem. Somebody has been asking you repeatedly for money and you invite them to church, they will not come. 
The next time they will send you a message again, please raise us money. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Stop sending them money. The best gift I have for you, bro, is the gospel. It is gospel to the poor, not money to the poor. Teach them how to fish and don't give them fish all the time. A couple of people who, 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 who do that, they don't leave one spot. You, and you are wondering, I'm inviting you to the source of blessing. You will not come, but you ask me for money. So after this service, you know that it is gospel to the poor, not money to the poor. Money will solve their problem because they have a fundamental mentality issue which only the word of God can renew, can wash the mind. Praise the Lord. So three things the Lord asked me to declare to us what good news mean. Number one, verse 16 of that same scripture, Luke chapter 4, verse 16, what good news represent. The Bible says he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and he stood to read. Then verse 17, they delivered to him the book of Isaiah. And he opened the book and he found the place. I ask you to say that with me on purpose before now. He found the place where it was written. He found the place where they wrote something concerning him. Then verse 18, this is what Jesus was meant to do. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. If you read Isaiah 61, you'll find this scripture of Abaddon there. So he was reading Isaiah and what his purpose was. So number one, good news means purpose. That's what good news means. It equal purpose. Somebody in this service this morning, you will find purpose. Good news means purpose. It means finding and maximize purpose. Jesus found the place where it was written concerning him. When you receive good news, you find your essence of living. And this is the challenge with many walking around. They don't know what they are supposed to be doing. Somebody is not sure. I don't know, Timmy, Timmy talked that way. Timmy said, you should study where you are going before you go there and be watching adult bum bum. What, what a word. That's powerful. You know how many people are suffering today. I use the word suffering, even though there is constant electricity, but you pay very high for it. People are chasing bills because of inaccurate information, not knowing where they are going. When you find purpose, whether in Nigeria or Canada, you won't suffer. Purpose is the essence of life. Jesus found the place where it was written concerning him. You need to find and maximize purpose. Then I know you have good news. Anyone struggling out of purpose in this service today, you will come in line. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And it is not too late to right the wrong. If you are on a wrong road, there is no destination. You have to come back on track. Purpose is the essence for life. Many are crying today because they married the wrong person. Oh, and I know. That will not be your story. Many married people today are saying, wow, what a mistake I have made. And I'm stuck. And the Bible says you shall not divorce. Purpose is important. He found the place. So it's time for you to find what God has said about you. Maybe you need to ask yourself critical question in this service. What I'm doing right now is that the purpose of God for my life. Pastor, are you saying that there is a purpose of God for my life? Yes, emphatically yes. 
Jeremiah 1 verse 5. He said, even before your father and your mother met, I know you. How? He said, before you were formed in your mother's womb, in your mother's belly, I knew you. And before you came out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained you to be this. For Jeremiah, he was ordained to be a prophet to nations. There is a purpose of God for your life. He has a plan for your life. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. I like NIV of that scripture. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. He said, I know the plan I have for you. Declares the Lord. Wow, God has a plan for my life. Brothers and sisters, this morning, God has a plan for your life. And what are those plans? Plan to prosper you, not to harm you. Plan to give you a hope. And what? My future is in God. The earlier you align, the better for your destiny. You need to discover and maximize the plan of God for your life. Don't run like others are running. Don't go the way the others went. Lord, what is your plan? And what is your plan at a time like this? Don't do what is popular. Don't do what is trending. Do purpose. Maximize purpose. The good news you desire, that's why it's number one. Good news is purpose. Good news is finding purpose. Jesus found where it is written concerning him. So as they gave him the Bible to read, he was reading his own CV. This is why you came. To heal the brokenhearted. To preach the gospel to the poor. This is your assignment in life. Finding purpose make life meaningful. In fact, achievement in life begin with precision. Knowing where you are going. Achievement in life starts with precision. You are not shadow boxing. You are not beating the hair. You are not running everywhere doing what is popular. You find purpose. You discover your assignment while you are here on earth. This is one prayer somebody needs to pray repeatedly in case you have not found it. Lord, what are you saying? What do you want me to do in life? What is your assignment for my life? That is the greatest and the best news. If you are seeking good news, the best news that can happen to a man is to know the plan of God for his life. When you know the plan of God for your life, you won't struggle. Proverbs 29 verse 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. They are cast off restraint where there is no vision. Enough of chasing shadow. Jesus found his purpose for you to enjoy life. And you need to know, when that scripture was read, Jesus had not started his ministry. He was still preparing to go into ministry. In fact, this is coming down out of after 40 days of fasting, he went into the synagogue. They gave him the scripture and he said he found the place where it was written concerning him. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. It's time for this church to go and find your essence of living. How do you go through this troublous time walking outside purpose, doing things that are not convenient, running and chasing shadows. You don't need that. At this point in time, it's time for you to say, Lord, what do you want me to do? As we go into March, what do you want me to do? I don't want to shadow box. I don't want to run as somebody who doesn't know where he's going. Lord, where will you want me to go? What do you want me to do business with? What is your purpose for this relationship? What is your purpose for this assignment? Many are struggling today because they are out of purpose. Not in line. Doing business with the wrong people. In fact, doing the wrong business. You should know with precision what God wants you to do. Where he wants you to be. 
your provision will only meet you in the place where God has ordained. The Lord is my shepherd, then I shall not want. When he leads, provision will meet you there. If things are hard right now, can you check if you are in the will of God for your life? Even if you are going through a wilderness experience, there is still manna in the wilderness. If you follow purpose, it will always make a way. Provision will only meet you where God has placed you. If you place yourself, you must finance yourself. Provision come. There is a place in life called there. Go to Sarafet. I have commanded a widow to feed you there. If you don't go to Zarafet, you go to another place, you feed yourself. Go to the brook. I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Ravens like to eat meat, but because it's she, the ravens is under command to feed Elijah. There is a place God has ordained for your life. And you must find it. Before you take major decision of your life, Seek God's will. Seek God's agenda. Don't just run and say, ah, this house is beautiful. You may not come out of the house alive. But that will not be your case. Amen. I've seen a brother in the days when we were doing student fellowship pick a house in Magodo Estate here. Beautiful. Flower all around, but demonic house. Beautiful house side. In that house, he lost a child, lost his job, lost ministry, everything got grounded until he ran out of the house. He went in full, he came out empty. Diminish. Before you pay for the house, speak in tongues. Shalika para. What's your purpose? What's your purpose? I've lived in a house before and God said to me, this house was good enough for being single. You can't marry here. I ran. I've lived in a house before where God said to me, he said, your wife cannot give birth in this house. Then I move around the house. This is a house I've lived for more than two years. But when I heard that word on a Saturday afternoon, so I move to the back of the house. Then I look through the wall. Then inside the wall, I saw charms planted. Then I remember all the do's and don'ts that the owner of the house has given to me. Then I begin to connect the dot. Then I had to run for my life with my anointing. Somebody doesn't say, no, I am anointed. No, it's a way match you are playing. You can't win in the devil's territory. Go and look for your place called there. I will appoint a place for my people. And when I appoint that place, they will be moved no more. Neither will the source of wickedness afflict them like they did before now. If you stay in another man's place, you will suffer there. Even with your anointing. At a time, they had to take Jesus. They ran away because they want to kill him. So you, you will have more fire than Jesus. You must locate your place. You must find purpose. Operating outside purpose will bring you confusion. Baba Deboye with the fire Baba carry. At a time, he ran away from Ifewara to go and carry fire. Then now, he has taken fire back to Ifewara. Where king now gone for their service. Traditionally, everybody submit to Jesus. You must find purpose. Until you find purpose, there is no peace. There is no joy. The good news you desire, like Jesus, is in purpose. What you are doing right now, check, is this the will of God for my life? Or I'm just surviving. I'm just struggling. There is nothing wrong getting life going. But until you discover purpose, you can't maximize life. Can I rewind? Nothing wrong with getting life going. What, you will, what will happen at that point is that survivor. You are just doing survivor. You are, any job that comes, you do it. You know, in the university, there are people they call any job. It's any work, right? You know, anything you want to do, they wash, cook, food, whatever. They do any work for you. But 
what God is saying is that that is just struggling level. There is a level you go to, you get to in life. You don't do any work. It's not every business you should take. There are businesses that are trapped. It's not every relationship you must go in into. And listen to me, brothers and sisters, not every relationship will end on the altar. There are some relationships that should end at Riaza level. Hmm. Not everyone you meet is your wife or your husband. You don't know people until, they, until you bring them into your home. At that point, there's no more makeup. At that point, you will see character. At that point, weak will be on one side. You will see the real head. <laughs> At that point, you will see bra, the gentle bra. Then you see that ah, all men it doesn't see a wall. <laughs> look beyond what you can see, brother. Look, look beyond what you can see. Take people to prayer, to prayer halter, to campground. Zalego barata. This benro kalish kapara. Let's go pereto kobaya. Then God will begin to reveal to you. I do, th- I, I do that a lot to know people. Spirit of God, I like this man, but I don't want to judge after my sight. Who is he? The one, he may not speak, but he will surely speak. He will reveal this thing. Things will happen that you will get to know people. People organize meeting with you, but you already know them before they came up. You know what they want to say. Nothing come to you by surprise. I want you to find, if we are talking about good news, it's purpose number one. Knowing the essence of living, why you are here. Jesus, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do in 2023? What's your purpose? Guide me, Lord. This person that is super nice to me, I hope he's not a devil. Because the devil comes as an angel of light. He comes disguising. But you don't know. Purpose. You must find purpose. You must find the will of God for, for your life. There are people who are taking a bet on your destiny that I will make sure that lady falls. Watch it. Then he come and pretend to be a super Christian, but he's a drunkard. His essence is to bring down your Christianity. Then after the lady falls, then the brother runs away. Then he goes back to the same people. He says, where is the money? I won. People are playing kites on someone else's destiny. But don't be gullible. Make sure you size of people in the spirit. As the spirit of God, what are you saying? Don't rush into relationship. There are people who should not come to your inner court no matter how they pretend. Keep them in the outer court where they belong. No matter how they try to penetrate, you say, okay, I'm still praying about it. And that's one thing about my life. You can't rush me. No matter how you rush me, I will do what the Holy Ghost wants me to do. No matter how many people are putting pressure, let's follow the voice of heaven. Can I hear amen? It will give all of us peace of mind. It will help us to maximize our destiny. The good news you are seeking is in you finding why you are here. Purpose. That is the starting point for Jesus. He found what was written concerning him. If Jesus could not survive without finding it, you can't do otherwise. You must find your essence. Why am I here? What do you want me to do? And I remember during the encounter, I emphasized this thing so much. Moses did not find it until 80. You don't need to be that old before finding why you are here. It's a very simple prayer. You need to pray repeatedly in case you have not found it. I told people repeatedly, I am more of a pastor than an accountant. That's my essence. I do what I'm doing right now effortlessly. Because I am called to do what I'm doing. 
Even when I came into accounting in 1994, I remember in that professional school, while on the first night of arriving in Pride, I just went to the, to the fellowship place to pray, and the Lord said to me, you are not here only to qualify it. You are here to affect lives. Then from that point, I began in the fellowship. I began leading people. While other people are studying, I'm telling somebody about Jesus. Hey, let's go to fellowship. And we saw phenomenal fil- growth in the church, in the work of God, even as a student, because he said, you are not here only to qualify. And from that day one, I know I'll become a chartered accountant. But you are here to affect life. That's my purpose. That's my assignment. Somebody may need to cry on a three days fast. Lord, what do you want me to do? Why am I here? What's your purpose? I know I've struggled so much. Purpose can be discovered by that. Where your pastor speak into your life and say, this is what the Lord is saying concerning you. Pastor Adeboye is a product of prophetic order. He never found purpose on his own. But Parky Diomi said there is the hand of God upon this man. And they went to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Kenneth Ege spoke to the founder. He said, what God has set into your heart, do it. Prophetic order. We are two, three prophets confirming the same thing about your destiny. Number two, revelation and vision. Where you see by yourself. This is what God wants me to do. Number three, the voice of the spirit, the voice of God. That people will hear God. God speaks to them. Number four is inner witness. Then number five is the word of God. I've taught you in the past. See, number one to four can fail. But this number five is the more sure word of prophecy. The word of God is the surest. It never fails. Open this scripture and find where it is written concerning you. Your job is here. Your next level of glory is here. The word of God is the sure, more sure word of prophecy. How do I know that a time is coming where you will have money in the bank and you will never assess it? Did you listen to that prophecy? How do I know? I found it here. I found it here. Because God said a time is coming where there will be scarcity of the word of God. And from that scripture, the word of God jumped into my spirit. That the way the economy of the world is going. See, what we have seen in Nigeria is not limited to, the, to Nigeria. Hear what I'm telling you now. Even the advanced nations of the world, we're going to see more financial crisis like we've never seen before. Don't put your trust in any economy. Put your confidence in God. We are in America in Canada, in United Kingdom, they will be cash crunched. Economic crisis. Say, Pastor, why don't you prophesy that this thing will pass away? No, it must happen. It's one of the revelations of the end time. It's there in the world. And by what I have found, I will never trust, trust this world system. My confidence is in God, not in any system. System will fail. During COVID, entire world system collapsed. Aviation collapsed. No plane was flying. You can feel fear everywhere. Anybody know what I'm talking about? The system of the world is designed to fail. Only the word of God stands forever. My prayer is that somebody in this service, you will find purpose. In the name of Jesus. Take some time in your, in your home. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. And before you start the prayer, Jesus, I just want to pray for the next 15 minutes. My praying in the Holy Ghost is to identify your purpose for my life. As I pray right now, help me to find purpose. And you start, listen, after 15 minutes, it will look like nothing has happened to you, but something has registered in your spirit. You begin to take only the right step in life, right decision. God begin to chase evil people that will derail you away from you. Can I hear a fire? Amen. Yeah. 
My prayer for young people in this church, you won't marry the wrong person. In the name of Jesus. Everyone who has taken a bet on your life that you will come down, that your destiny will be derailed, we chase them away by fire. This is why you need to pray purpose prayer. Stop eating popcorn and uh, burger and forget destiny. Uh, you know, I, I love you, I love chicken. I, and You have chicken away life. Why don't you take the name of the brother to pray your altar? This brother that offered me chicken peri peri, lavre go dozo balada. Holy Ghost, what are you saying about Kenneth? And what are you saying about you? You and you. What are you saying, Jesus? What are you saying about this lady? Everything about her is good, but Jesus. What's here now? Can I hear a fire? Amen. Yeah. You must find purpose. You must find purpose. It's key. It's key in business. It's key in career. It's key in marriage. It's key in life. Don't go through life shadow boxing. You will maximize life if you are in the center of His will for your life. I would have been a gunner in life, maybe not doing ministry today, if I had married the wrong person. In those days in Pai, I was just doing the work of God. I told you the other day that I didn't pray for my wife. She came as a result of service. When you are in the will of God for your life, things will just be happening. Children came. We didn't need to fast and pray for children to come. Job came. Since I started working, I have never been out of job. Just by following the will of God for my life. So, in the professional environment, just doing my thing in church seven, and never seen it before. A young lady, that time was Asu Strike. Asu Strike has been there for a long time. This was 1997 or so. A young lady just speak interest in this young brother Joseph serving the Lord. 1997. And, I mean, she would buy me stuff. I even learned that she was a, 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 a um, relative of one of the directors of the school at the time. I didn't know. But somehow, this friendship grew. And See, I was very focused. <laughs> very anointed. V very on fire. And I think I got witness in this house. Very, we were saying yes at the back. You were not born. <laughs> very, very focused. Now listen to me. This lady went back to school. She was OAU, if I. And from school, she wrote me a letter. You know, there was no GSM. Sheena, why are you so excited? <laughs> so she wrote me a long hand letter, and I saw the letter. So the emotional tie became so high. So I started praying. Holy Ghost, what are you saying? Holy Ghost, what are you saying? Then in one of the nights, I, I, I got a revelation. This lady goes to redeem. She's not... MFM in nature. I was MFM in nature. Very, very born again. You know, she's born again, but she's not that kind of person who will pray our kind of MFM-like prayer. But in that revelation, I saw this lady praying violent kind of prayer that I am used to. And she's praying, Lord, I claim everything that belongs to me. Even the one that does not belong to me, I claim, I claim, I claim. And she was shaking her head, I claim, I claim, I claim. Then I recover from the revelation. I know how God speaks to me. So as I recover from the revelation, the voice sounded from heaven. You don't belong to her. You propose, she claim you. I backslided from that point. From that relationship, I ran for my dear life. 
because I had, I claim everything that belonged to me. Even the one that does not belong to me, I claim. I will have become Asna. <laughs> if, if, if I had proposed, I, I would have been a corner for life. Is there somebody who is claiming you now that you don't belong to? You better, no, it's not to die by fire. You run for your life. Because she's not evil. She didn't do me anything. In fact, when we got married, the church where we got married, she is a choir in that church. Amen. So, so I am saying this to you for you to know the essence of purpose. Don't marry the wrong person. I don't know who is claiming you in the spirit. You better run for your life. Some of you, you need to make restitution. Because you are raising the hope of somebody you know you will not marry. Doing canopy all over the place. You'll be following the lady, even carrying the lady's bag. And people are assuming what is not. Sister, take the broad name in prayer and ask question, bro, I hope everything is fine. What exactly are you looking for? He said, no, 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 I just want to be your friend. Give me my bag. Can I hear amen from this church? You must find purpose and chase purpose, maximize purpose. That is good news. Number two. Good news number two. Um, give me verse 18. Luke 4, 18, the same scripture. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good news. The good news equals the gospel. The gospel is the word of God. Number two, he has anointed me to preach the gospel. NIV says to proclaim good news. Good news equals the gospel, the word of God. You cannot separate the word and good news. The good news you desire is in the word. You want to excel in life, you must study this Bible. This book of the law must not depart from your mouth. You must meditate on it day and night. What will now happen? Then you will make your way prosperous. And what will happen to you? You will have good success. The book of the law. At 2032, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. Your inheritance is in the world. 2023 is here. Your future is in this world. Your success is in this world. Life itself is in This is the manual for life. John 6, 63 says so. He said, the flesh profit nothing, but the spirit gives life. The word I speak to you, they are spirits and they are life. This is your life. How do you live without studying life itself? Every, people may do every other thing minus this one. Men shall not live by bread alone but by every word. Your money, your inheritance, your future, your happiness, your joy is in the world. This is good news. The gospel. In fact, John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was this man, the word. The word was with God. The word was God. This is God in your house. God on your phone. 
Verse 4, he said, in him was life. You are not alive until this thing enter your spirit. And this life was the light of man. Verse four, 5, and the light shine in darkness and darkness cannot stop it. You must get the word into your spirit. You must get the word. Read it morning, afternoon, night. I hear people say stuff like, let's put the Bible aside. Let's face reality. What can be more real than the world? This is life. Every time you say, let's put the Bible aside, you are, taking, you are saying, let's live the real essence of life. It's let's face reality. This is reality. Only people who don't know the world make such statements. You can't speak without speaking the world. This is your life. This is your essence of living. You can't put the Bible aside. You must stay on the word. Why we have peace at this time? During COVID, my spirit was very high. And I was encouraging others. I was strengthening others. Because out of the abundance of the I have received, I was pouring out. Because my mind is on the world. This is where we go shalom, shalom. Isaiah 26 verse 3. That we keep him in perfect peace. Shalom, shalom. Whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts you. Let your mind stay on the world. At Nigeria elections, stay on the world. If you watch the news too much, you will become polluted. You will become discouraged. You will become hungry. Some are already hungry even as they came to church this morning. They want to cheat us. Ah! Praise God. Stay on the word. You have done your part. You voted. You prayed. What else will you do? Carry gun? No. Don't degenerate to that level. You will keep him in shalom, shalom, whose mind stayed on you. My mind is on the word. I shall have good success because I meditate on the word day. This is your life. Don't go a day without studying the word. It's a risk. To continue life without the word not staying on the inside of you is a very big risk. Isaiah 119, he said, if you be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. I know the obedient family are so happy with that scripture, man. You want to eat the good of the land? Be obedient. You will eat the good of the land. Verily, verily, I say unto you, be obedient. <laughs> Praise God. Don't struggle with the word. Stay on the word. Obey the word. Do the word. If you don't do the word, you don't know God. Because this is God. And you see anything in the Bible, you pick the one you love. But you, you say this one, I don't think it's practicable. Uh-uh. Pastor, how can two people who have chemistry be in relationship? And you say there will be no biology. How? How, Pastor? No, 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 no. It cannot happen. Pastor, Hebrew 13 verse 4 is not for this generation. So you pick the one you love. And you know Hebrew 13 verse 4? He said marriage carry honor if you don't defy the bed. You defy the bed, you carry dishonor. Choose the one you want. Marriage is honorable when the bed is undefiled. Ah, oh, prostitutes, warmongers, he called them, an adulterer. God is says, hey, I will stand as their judge. I, I see the secret. Where pastor is not present, I am there. All warmongers and I draw tongues. I will judge. Stay on the word. If the word says don't do it, leave it. If the word says give and it shall be given to you, don't be wiser than God. The best time to give is this time. You sow in famine. Because your seed will speak ahead of you. Praise the Lord. There are many who are struggling financially. And I'm saying to you, give 
your way out of penalty. Somebody is struggling. There are people in this church who are preaching first fruit who don't give first fruit. They tell people, ah, you know, I always share, I just be done. It's not a practitioner. It's not in your preaching. It is in your doing. I won't preach what I don't do. Personal. And when God sees your heart, he sees your action. Because the Bible says he weighs our action, not what we profess. If you know God, you will do his work. You won't do selective doing. Praise the Lord. And you see, there's no need for you to pretend. We come to church, everybody smiles, but God knows the intent of your heart. He knows those who are living right. He knows those who are not living right. He knows those who take a little green bottle even before they come to church. Then you see everybody bouncing the Holy Ghost. There are some people, it's something else that is bouncing them. Everybody share Dancing the Holy Ghost, dancing. The, some of us are really dancing the Spirit. Some, some are prepared by a green bottle. But it takes you to search in the Spirit. I'm sure it's this person doing the will of God. Can I hear amen? amen? I encourage you to stay on the Word. Stop hiding your Bible. You are reading the Bible you don't want anybody to see. In those days, there are people who want to come to church or fellowship. We used to have blue... Uh, What's the name of those uh, small New Testament Bible? Gideon's Bible. People put it in their pockets when they are coming to church. When they get to church, they bring it out. Some even wrap their Bible in newspaper. How do you wrap this one? This is the kind of thing I carry. And people have criticized me. A young man who works with flower means in those days, maybe 94, 95. I went to the class. It should be 95. I was in 80 years too, 1995. I went to the class to invite... It was not as big as this. It was a small black Bible. And I said, you remember that small black Bible? I said, hey, it's time for fellowship. The Lord will bless you as you come in the name of Jesus. First person that responded in the class, he said, every time you invite us, you say, come to the uncompleted building. When are you going to complete the building? Just to mock the gospel. Then I went preach that evening. That time, fellowship was every day before class. After preaching in the evening, I came to the class to sit down. I sat beside this guy who was with flower maze. He called me and said, Joseph, you and this, your black thing. He called the Bible black thing. The last time I checked was two years ago. He's still a factory worker in flower maze. 95, 28 years, still a factory worker. His level has not changed. It, how do you you work as a factory worker 28 years ago, you are still there. Because he talked down on the black thing. You call the word of God the black thing. Mock my God. I may have changed level. This black thing has taken me everywhere in the world. Remember, last year we went for evangelism in Ojota and I gave one afar. Our flyer. And if I look at me, it's a young man. Can't you get something doing? This is hell in the morning. Go and get something doing. Uh-uh. He was obviously angry with me. He didn't know that that flyer was my ticket to change my level. Early morning rate is your ticket for your next level. Can I hear amen? amen? I encourage this church to stay on the world, study the world. Know the word. Do the word. Don't just confess. Do what you are saying. Do the word. Practice the word. In this dark world, it is what you know in the word that will make you stand. The Bible says, arise, shine, because of what you found. Your light has come. Your light. And you know the word of God is light. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. What you find will determine where you stand. What you find will determine how you behave. There is something I know that I know that this time will also pass. COVID has come and gone. Farming will come and go. You go. Nigeria election will come 
and go. Tell you, this time will pass. I know the world. I know too much of God to preserve his people in crisis. To provide for his people in crisis. Somebody is listening to me in church this morning. This week, a miracle awaits you. Yeah. Testimony awaits you. Stay on the word. Do the word. Don't do selective uh, obedience. I will avenge you of all disobedience when your own obedience is complete. Stay on the word. Preach the gospel. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Can I hear amen? amen? Number three, and I wrap up as we pray this morning. Good news is what you find in verse 18 again. Luke 4, 18. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Good news is the spirit. And you know, Island Church, what is this year? It's the year of the spirit. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. The word anointed, it is a flow of the spirit. I am licensed to do what I'm doing. Good news comes by the manifestation of the spirit. You want good news. It will come by the spirit. It's not going to be by your power. It's not going to be by your mind. If you read that Isaiah 61, the original text, where Jesus was quoting from, Isaiah 61 from verse 1, the spirit of the Lord, he started with the spirit. Good news is manifestation of the Holy Spirit. You can't talk about good news and disassociate it from the spirit. Good news is the spirit. In as much as you have found purpose, you have stayed on the word, you must somehow sort in the spirit. Good news is the manifestation of the spirit. The manifestation of the spirit is given to everyone to profit with that. The good news you desire will come by the spirit. The enablement of the spirit. Go back to Isaiah 61 from verse 1. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news. I am anointed to preach good tidings. I'm licensed to preach good tidings. And it is good tidings to the meek. New Testament call it the poor. NIV of Isaiah 61 verse 1, call it the poor. Can I say NIV? He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. So I'm going to start my prophetic declaration from here. Everyone poor in this church, um, I mean, you desire capital, you desire your business to flourish, you desire things to happen in your life, Be, by reason of this service, I declare right now, receive empowerment. Amen. Receive empowerment. Amen. All the money you need, receive it right now. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. this week I declare divine lifting. Amen. Miracle job. Amen. Miracle opportunity. Amen. Relationship that will change your life. Preach good news to the poor. The poor need this kind of prophetic declaration. Good news. By the enablement. He said he has anointed me to preach. I am licensed to preach good news to the poor. So anyone believing God for a change of status. You need a change of job. It's happening right now. New job. God will bring good people your way. Did you hear Samuel's testimony this morning? A mentor called him. Submit your CV. He submitted a CV of many people to this owner of company. And out of the so many, his own was picked. And he got there. The people began to speak grammar. We have looked at his CV. He does not have tech experience. He said, no, don't worry about that. That's why I want to invest in him. People who will speak for you where you are not present. And I'm sure Sam was not there when they were discussing that, line, that, that, that kind of discussion. He said, this man is ready to invest in me. He's ready to spend his integrity, his resources on my personality. Because it's gospel to the poor. When you find this thing I'm teaching 
this morning, you will never be poor for the rest of your life. And this week, God will give you a sign of this word. What you find difficult economically, financially, will become so easy. In the name of Jesus. God will make a way for you where there seems to be no way. Those of you in business, this week you will enjoy amazing patronage. Amazing patronage. In the name of Jesus. It is the gospel to the poor. The poor don't need money, they need the gospel. Listen, if there is anyone you are giving money regularly, that money will finish. Introduce them to Jesus. Tell them to come to church regularly. When they come to church regularly, their mindset will be renewed. There are people who ask you for money with entitlement mentality. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You, you, if you don't give me, I will die. There are people who say like that, that you know, there's no other person I can go to except you. If you don't give me money right now, I'm going to die. He won't die. Tell them I give you Jesus. Come to Island Church. Come for our service, first service. It is covenant day of good news. There are people you have invited that they didn't come. They will come and ask you for money after the service. Stop giving them money. I am giving you that line. You are licensed to preach the gospel to them. Not money. Because money you give them will finish. They need your source, which is God. This is gospel. A poor man does not need money. It's, it's a thing of the spirit. They need the gospel. This is, you need to know this is Jesus. This is one of his primary assignment. Gospel to the poor. Good news to the poor. And that's why after this covenant day of good news, many in Highland Church will become super rich. Yeah. Stupendously rich. Many of you. Many of you. Many of you. Something is, is, is vibrating your spirit. I think the pastor is talking about me. This week there will be testimony. Yeah. Testimony of new beginning. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Many of you this week you will come to this issue. Because of good things that will happen. You will have three, four jobs asking you to come. Yeah. The, then you will come back and say, oh good news has come. Jesus, which one shall I pick? And like in Brother Yebola's testimony, you may be asked to pick the one whose salary is not the highest. Man, it's not convenient. Brother Yebola, was it convenient that many years ago? This man has two jobs. And, uh, yeah, three jobs. And um, out of the three, after we prayed, the Holy Ghost says, pick the one with the lowest amount. Then he foolishly obeyed because it's not convenient. There are many here who are hearing me say, Pastor, ah, highest be than you. Uh -huh. Did I come to Count, Count Bridge in Lagos? No, 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 no. Please go and pray again. But this man can tell you it is from that lowest salary that is eating for life. Because God took him to that industry to learn. From that industry, he has registered his own company to become a practitioner. And that is not what he studied. Don't let education blind you. Education is a base. Just for you to know that this is what I want you to do for life. Or for you to learn. Paul was an established lawyer, but he became he became famous by preaching the gospel. People knew him by preaching the gospel. Education is a base. You may be an accountant and God says, go and be doing buying and selling. I'm sure you know one of the presidential candidates in the name of Peter B. he went to the best of the best of the schools in the world. He was a millionaire in pounds in United Kingdom before coming into Nigeria. He was the chairman of Fidelity Bank, a major commercial bank in Nigeria. But every time this man campaigned, he preferred to identify himself as a trader. Did you hear that? Every time he called himself, I'm a trader. The first time he landed in Lagos, where did he go to first? Alaba International Market. Where are the traders? Ladipo market the following day. 
like to identify with the trader. This is the person who has gone to Harvard, has gone to best school of the world, then they say, I'm a trader. Because he made his money by buying and selling. Don't let education blind you. Holy Spirit, what do you want me? Your future is in his purpose. So when those testimonies begin to learn, you go back to number one. Jesus, what are you saying? Because sometimes open door may not be God's door. They may be trapped in disguise. You know, there are doors you enter, you don't come back again. It's the rami rami journey. Just go, you vanish into the TM like that. Yes. So before you open the door, he said this door is opened by Jesus. What are you saying? Before you enter, you may go on a three days retreat. Sakalabaharish kahada. This door is open, but I won't enter until you speak. And when God is silent, does not mean goes go ahead. Because in, in law, they say silent is constant. Ah, I think I have peace. Lazy man. I have peace. I have peace. How do you know this lady is your wife? Pastor. I have peace. Peace like a river. Every time. I am with her. There's just peace. It flows like a river. I have peace. Praise the Lord. That's a very lazy man approach. His vision speak peace, I know. But why don't you let us know what God is saying? Stay on the word. He will speak to you. He will give you revelations. He will give you insight. You will know that you know that the Spirit of God is the one leading you. This week is a week of amazing good news. You will hear it in country. You will hear it outside the country. Somebody saying, amen. If people you don't know will favor you. He will use your situation. What you are going through right now. It will use you to lead you to purpose. To lead you to his assignment. To lead you to what he wants you to do. I am licensed to do what I'm doing this morning. He said because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. We've been there. If anybody is discouraging this church this morning, we have been there. All the pastors of this church at this point on the time or the other, we've, we've been discouraged. We've been cast down. Where we don't know where the next meal will come from. But we waited upon the Lord. Those who wait upon the Lord, He renewed their strength. So you are here this morning, you are like discouraged. Pastor, this message on good news, it looks like you're talking about me. I'm going to pray for purpose. I'm going to, I'm going to study the word of God. Then I'm going to depend on the spirit of God. This good news must happen to me. Then if that looks like you this morning, I want you to pray from the depth of your heart. My story must change. My story must change. My story must change. Everybody pray right now. Everybody pray right now. Lift up your voice. Put your, lift up your voice. Put your trust in him. Lift up your voice. Everybody lift up your voice. This week, this good news for us to talk about I take my own. I take my own. Somebody, you are praying about purpose right now. This decision I am about to take, Holy Ghost, guide me. There is no careless prayer. God is listening to you as you pray this morning. He's hearing. He's hearing. God is hearing you. He's listening to you. Somebody who is not emotionally stable, God is listening to you. Ask him about him. Ask the Lord about him. This business you are about to do. Talk to God about it. Talk to God about it. God, I will not miss your purpose for my life. Lift up your voice, Highland Church. Lift up your voice this morning. 
I will not miss your purpose for my life. I will not miss your purpose for my destiny. In the name of Jesus. Project again for me Isaiah 61 from verse 1. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind the brokenhearted. One of the questions last Sunday is that somebody said, said she has been served breakfast severally. This is one of the mission of Jesus to bind up the brokenhearted. Weakness in your spirit. Bind up the brokenhearted. Emotional healing. Bind up. The, proclaim freedom to the captive. Anyone who is in any form of captivity, your time of release is now. Release from darkness. Go back to King Jesus and release from prison houses. It's time for you to come out of prison houses. Ugly situation. Opening of prison to those who are bound. So you are in chain. You don't know what to do. It's time to come out of bondage. Come out of weakness. Come out of the court. Come out of those relationships that is not of God. Come out. Come out. Opening of prison to those who are in prison houses. Verse 2. Verse 2. You know that people go into things you don't know what you are doing until you enter in it. God is saying my mission. I'm bringing you good news to come out of it. This is what the spirit is going to do. The spirit enables you to open the prison door. To proclaim the acceptable year of the law. The acceptable year of the law is a year of release. Where if you have been serving for many years, your boss says it's time for you to grow. This morning I declare it's your acceptable year. Nigeria is our acceptable year. It's time of release. To proclaim the acceptable year of the law. And the day of vengeance of our God. So many, so many blessings. In Isaiah 61, verse 1 to 3, many of you are saying, Amen, God will fight for you. Amen. After this service, you will see your God in action. Amen. The day of vengeance of our God. And verse 3, very powerful verse 3. He said, He's going to give them new jobs. Can you, can you pronounce the two words, the first two words in verse 3? One, two, three, go. To appoint. So an appointment letter is coming. To appoint to them that mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for money. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I always like to say that in Yoruba. The spirit of heaviness is ipururuokon. Confused mind. He said, I want to give you the garment of praise. For the spirit of heaviness. Instead of confusion, I want you to be praising God. Where you know with precision what to do in life. That they may be called the trees of righteousness. The plantings of the Lord. Planted. Plant me where you want me to be, Lord. You may desire to be in Lekki and God want to plant you in Ikeja. I will call them the plantings of the law. And the last statement is the reason why I've gone this long all. He said that they may be glorified. I want to glorify Islanders. I want to glorify you. This 2023 that they may be glorified. You're going to lift up your voice. Lord as I go into this week I declare glory. I declare favor. I declare honor. I am the plantings of the law. I am the trees of righteousness. I am glorified. Everything I lay my hand upon, prosper, blossom, is on the increase. No shame, no reproach. I am blessed and highly favored. Everywhere I go from now, it is favor upon favor, honor upon honor, joy upon joy, celebration upon celebration. No weakness on my part, no disease on my part, no shame on my part. No reproach on my part. In the name of Jesus. I'm blessed. Highly favored. Glorified. In the name of Jesus. Everything I lay my hand upon. Shall prosper. Shall blossom. Shall be on the increase. 
in the name of Jesus lift up your two hands this morning I declare you blessed I want your amen to be a blessed amen I declare you blessed beginning from now good news everywhere you turn good news somebody receive good news job good news appointment letter testimony celebration in the name of Jesus everywhere you go good news everywhere you go good news in the name of Jesus somebody is saying amen you will find purpose you will maximize purpose listen to me purpose is not once and for all I am your pastor I am still maximizing purpose because purpose is in faces there's a face upon your, of your life where you say God what will I do as long as you live you continue to discover God because he won't give you everything from day one. I pray for someone, as I pray for myself this morning, this month, ending, and as we go into the month of March, you will maximize purpose. In the name of Jesus. I don't know who I'm praying for. You will not run another man's vision. Ladies and men in this church who are not married, you will not marry the wrong person. You will marry purpose. Amen. You will marry your own husband. Amen. You will marry your own wife. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Everyone who is emotionally down, I declare good news. Amen. Be healed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every emotional pain be healed. Amen. I pray specially this morning for the barren. Receive your children. Amen. Receive your bottle of joy. Let the womb of Hannah's in this house be open today. In the name of Jesus. Somebody, amen, is the sharpest and then the loudest. This year we will rejoice with you. This year we will celebrate with you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Your bundle of joy is here. In the mighty name of Jesus. We say in amen. Everywhere you go, after now is favor. His joy, his celebration in the mighty name of Jesus. By virtue of the testimony we have received in this house today, new job is coming. Somebody healing in your body in the name of Jesus.